Hello and welcome, this is Jennifer McGuire. Today I'm doing something I haven't done in a very long time and that is a shorter video. I thought I'd do these once in a while but not replace my regular videos. This video is called a two in 10 where I make two cards in about a 10 minute video. I'll try to get that target. Now in this video I will be showing how to use in a very easy way the new Tim Holtz Distress Mica Stain Sprays. These are super cool and I'll use them very simply. Let's get started with this example here. I'm doing my sentiment first. This is the Honey Bee Stamps, Thinking of You Big Time Stamp Set. It's a great set, six by eight, and there are coordinating dies, which you'll see in a moment. I also have my Misty Stamping Tool, and I'm stamping big hugs onto Tim Holtz Black Matte Alcohol Ink Cardstock. Definitely my favorite black cardstock for sentiments. I'm using my new cotton tail powder tool. This is an anti-static powder tool that is fantastic. There's no odor to it. It's hypoallergenic and I really like this little container. I'm guessing some people were saying that these exist in the makeup world, but I'm not into makeup. So um, I've never seen anything like this before. And the material inside is refillable and it is fantastic. I put down a lot more of the powder than is needed because I wanted to be able to show you in the video but it wipes off beautifully. Okay, now I'm adding Gina K Detail White Embossing Powder, and I'll heat set that. Now I wanted this to have extra dimension to it, the embossing, so I am, once it's cool, stamping with Versamark ink on it again, right on top of the embossing we've already done. And then I will add another layer of embossing powder and heat set it, and I'll do that a third time. That gives you really smooth, like domed dimension to your sentiment that really stands out on a card. It takes a few extra minutes, but it's worth that time. Just make sure you let it completely cool before you add the next layer of stamping. Okay, now I'm gonna wipe off that powder and use the coordinating die to cut it out. And here is the result we get. It is so sharp looking, that bright white, like arched look on that black cardstock. And I like how these dies cut up real close to the edge of the sentiment. All right, now it's time for the fun of the Distress Mica Stain Sprays. Now I'm going to use these in a very simple way, a very quick way, because this is my first time using them. And whenever I use something for the first time, I like to keep it simple. Now, if you want a really detailed explanation and lots of information and ways to use these, I will link to a Tim Holtz video that he did that is outstanding. But basically this is a stain that you spray and in it there is shimmer and the shimmer is fused to the colorant. So wherever the color goes, the shimmer goes too. And you know I love me some shimmer. All right, so let's get started. I'm using Tim Holtz watercolor paper and you wanna carefully shake these well before using. For this first example, I am just going to use these mica stains alone with nothing else, although they really are designed to work well with other products. So for a multimedia project, you can mix them with other distress products. But here, I'm just using a little bit of the colors that you see at the top, kind of doing a spray of each color in each corner. Now these, you really should overlap and mix, but I wanted to kind of see what they did on their own. So I'm only putting a couple of sprays of each color in the corners, trying to get a little bit of overlap, but not much. I then am misting it with my Tim Holtz sprayer just to add some water to help a little bit of movement. And then I'm gonna kind of freeze that by drying it from above. I'm not really applying heat, but more just the air by holding it higher from the project. And look at, you get a beautiful look already. After that's dry, I decided to add another very simple layer by repeating the process. So just actually this time I did one spray or two sprays in each corner, depending on the color, mist over the whole thing, and then freeze it with a little bit of warm air. This is a great way to create a very quick shimmery background. If there are big drops of water, I like to dab those off because it leaves like a little white spot there. And in those areas, the mica is kind of pushed out along with the color, and it really allows you to get the look of this amazing shimmery texture on the background. So that's all I'm going to do for this one. You can, again, mix this with other Distress products that you have. You can use this on top of your texture paste. So many things you can do. But I wanted to start simple, simple just to demonstrate how beautiful these are. And here is a quick look at the final panel. Oh man, I love that shimmer and how it creates these little droplets, yet there's shimmer everywhere too, because that's the only product I used on it. 
Okay, now let's die cut this once it's completely dry with the Honey Bee Autumn Splendor die, a beautiful background die. I then trimmed a little bit off of each side just so that a little white trim will show when I put this on a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card. Next, we add the big hugs to the center. Now, I wanted the big hugs to stand out a little bit, so I die cut two more of the big hugs from black cardstock, and I'm gluing it behind our heat embossed one. Then I will glue that onto the card, and that'll help it to stand out. I'm also adding some pretty pink posh metallic gold jewels here and there for a little bit of sparkle. And to match that, I have a metallic envelope from Simon Says Stamp. So here's a closer look. Look at that shimmer and that purple, especially on the purple leaf down there. Just beautiful. I think this is a great way to create quick backgrounds, but you remember can step this up by doing many of the techniques that Tim shows in his video. It's fantastic. And I promise I'll use more and share more and step it up in future videos. Okay, now let's do a simple background of a gradient of color using the stains. This time I'm starting again with watercolor paper, but I'm first putting down some Distress Ink. I'm not taking a huge amount of effort to blend them well because we're gonna spray on top of it, but I do overlap the colors for a bit of blending. I used Picked Raspberry, Salty Ocean, and Evergreen Bow. Now once I'm done with this, I'm gonna add Spray Stain, the Mica Stain Spray on top, and this is going to add some shimmer to it. It'll also add a little bit of color, but I don't need to use much because we already have the color there. Here are the colors I'm using this time. And by the way, these are available in packs of three. I used some of the Halloween release earlier, and these are the holiday release, and I'll have it all linked below. Now I'm just doing a little spray right in a line, right on top of the matching color. And then I'm misting it with water and also doing water droplets. With the Tim Holtz sprayer, if you kind of squeeze it light just a little bit, you get droplets. If you squeeze it all the way, you get mist. And I like to do both. You can see where the droplets fall, you get these spots and that look of texture, which I think is something that is really amazing about Distress Ink. It reacts with water and it creates those little rings, those dots. So I am just adding more water, drying it, adding more water, drying it until I get the result I like. So it takes very little of the, the mica stain spray and look at that beautiful result. So cool, especially up there in the pink and blues. Okay, now to turn this into a card, I thought I'd use the Honey Bee Stacking Art Deco Label Die Set. I'm taking two of the dies and taping them together to create some frames. And I created three of these frames from white cardstock. I also use the larger of the two frame dies to cut from our inked background. I can save that negative space for something else. Now I'm taking two of the white die cut frames and gluing those together, and then I'll glue those right on top of our inked background, just creating a nice frame for it. Now it's time to stamp on some acetate. This is the Simon Says Stamp Heat Resistant Acetate. I love this. It's super thick and it does not warp when you apply heat. And this is the Simon Says Stamp collaboration with Memory Box. This is the True Friend stamp set. There is a coordinating die available too. This is one of those sets that will sell out very quickly and not be restocked. So if you're interested, be sure to check it out sooner rather than later. I used my anti-static powder tool on the acetate, stamped with Versamark ink, added my Gina K white detail embossing powder, flicking off any of the excess, and then I heat set it and I'll have absolutely no warping. I love the look of a white heat embossed image on acetate. Now I'm going to die cut that with the large die and glue that right on top of our white frame dies. This will make it look like it's floating on top of our shimmery background. And then I add one last frame die cut on top of that for a finished look. For a background, I'm using the Simon Says Stamp Detail Bohemian Plate. This just creates a piercing pattern. And I did this from some Simon Says Stamp Fog cardstock. I trimmed it down a little bit and I'm adding it to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding white note card. I then can add our little frame right to the center of that. Now for a sentiment, I actually found this in my leftovers drawer. When I have extra sentiments left over, I put them there and I thought I'd use one today. It's from the Pink Fresh stamp set that you see over there on the left. You stamp the big image with all the sentiments and then die cut them all at once. So you end up with lots of sentiments very quickly. So I thought I'd put one of them to use here.
I did add some Trinity stamps, something new white pearls, but that's it. This is a very simple card for me, and it was a very easy way to use these products. Whenever you have a new product that you want to experiment with, try simple first, and then you can dive into learning more things that you can do with them, which I'll share in another video. But you can see that beautiful shimmer there behind the acetate. I just can't get enough. Absolutely beautiful. All right, this is as close as I can get to a 10 minute video. I'm going a little bit over, but that's the way it goes. I just, I'm long winded, what can I say? But if you are interested in the supplies I used on these, they are linked below my YouTube description. I always appreciate the time that you spend with me, whether it's 10 minutes or 35. So thank you for watching. At the end, I will link to a couple other related videos, including Tim's. Thanks for watching, have a wonderful day. We'll see you soon.